have ignition sequence start. The engines are on. Three, two, one, zero. So, you wanted to make something today, right? Well, we are holding canes. Yes, the, these are these are canes. So I guess this is what we're going to do today. Did we plan this? I don't know. Let me not read from my script. Is it funnier <laughs> this way, or should I keep reading? What's well, actually not here? Okay. Well, actually, as you know, I have had an obsession with Hammond's cane from Jurassic Park, and I never, I never bought one. I decided just to make one. Yeah, that's usually our, our MO. We'd rather make something than buy something. Although there have been some really impressive versions that people have made for sale on the RPF. Oh, definitely. Uh, Rylo's being the most notable, which we have something coming from him soon. Yes. Both of us have cryo cans coming. Can't wait. Um, but no, I decided um, I needed one of these to go with my cryo can. So you're holding the first one I ever yep. made. And I made that one out of uh, a dowel with clay wrapped around it. So it's, it's not the best. Yeah, it doesn't taper towards the end. It looks a little beefy in comparison to this one. That is, uh, this tapers all the way through it. And it has a little bit better look. It definitely, it's lighter. This is all wood. More professional um, looking cane. Yeah. Um, and this one also was when I was first perfecting getting the, the egg with the, the uh, bug inside it down. Yeah. And that's, if you look at that, it's just about perfect. Um, and actually, I'll edit in a uh, close-up of it. But, yeah, um, but that was really fun getting close to the camera with the with the egg. Okay. Um, anyway, that's more perfect than what you see in the movie. If you look at a, a screen grab, the amber eggs from the movie, they're not exactly about bubbles and even mm -hmm. a seam. That's an idealized version. That's polished to a high polish. Yeah. You can't see any seam, and the bug is posed. I found a way to, to mold these, which I'll show on the video. Mm -hmm. Where you can actually pose the bug. And if you look at this one, the bug's just shoved in. Yeah. And I remember some of the, the other eggs that uh, you made. There were... Wait. Actually, Here's another one. Cracks. Cracks, right. Uh, from the, the resin, which I personally like the, the look of the, the crack. And I sold some that were cracked, too, because I did a run of these eggs on the RPF about 10 or 12 or so. Mm -hmm. I got bombarded with emails the second I opened it up with everybody wanting these. Yeah. And I sold as many as I could, and I even gave a few away for the people that, that couldn't get on. I gave a couple of the cracked ones away. That People actually were happy with them. Yeah. I personally, I like the ones with the crack in it better, and when we do mine, you know, I'm going to make sure that I get one with a well, crack in it. We'll probably pour several today. We'll probably get a crack. What happened, what my theory is, is that there's moisture from the bugs in there, and this clear casting resin... Yeah, it gets really hot. It gets really hot. I'm down to catalyzing this with only a half percent of MEKP. And it takes 2% normally. 2%, but it gets too hot. I yeah. think moisture is trapped in the body of the bugs, and then it heats up and expands, and then you get those, where well, they look like cracks in the amber yeah. egg. So when I do the ones that are perfect, I'm down to about half a percent of MEKP in the, to the, uh, this clear polyester casting resin so that the heat doesn't build up enough and you don't get those cracks. And they come out and you gotta polish them. But today we'll do, um, I've got a couple buddies that want these. Yep. Um, so I think we'll do a one day build on one like this, all wood. Yep. I've got some dowels and we don't have a lathe. So we're gonna make some sort of a rudimentary lathe. <laughs> um, it's a rock, it doesn't have any motivations. Yeah, and it doesn't have any sensitive spots, so. Um, the, the, the one thing that we're going to say right off the bat is we don't have a lathe. So we're, we're using what we have. This is not the right way to do it. This is not the safest way to do it. We've done it a number of times and we've got some practice doing it. And we're going to get comments on this saying, this isn't how you do it. Yeah, duh, we know. And we don't have a lathe. So we're making do and we're taking precautions we have done it before so we know you know what to do and what not to do so we are fully cognizant that this isn't the way that you should do it but this is the way that we're going to do it today yeah. and hopefully you know we'll be getting a lathe in the future oh, i've been scoping out uh wood lathes on craigslist used ones you could probably pick one up for about 100 and 200 between 100 and 200 bucks mm -hmm. 
And then what I'll do for the next batch of these. Today we're making one for our friend Nick. Right. Um, but what we'll do later this week, I'm going to go check one out. And when I do a short, if I do a short run of these again on the RPF, they'll be on the lathe out of oak, mm -hmm. oak dowel. So it'll be really strong like this one is. And um, I'll probably get bombarded with emails of people wanting them and only 10 people will get them. And I'm sorry about that. But we have full-time jobs. Yeah, the, all of this, we do this because it's fun. We like making things. And if there's a prop that, that we want from the movies, and if we can make it, we'll make it. If it's something that we can't, like the cryo cans, then we'll be more than happy to pay someone who... Look, Rilo's done the footwork on that. Yeah. He's got all the CAD files. The other people that sell them basically copied his. Mm -hmm. And I'm not willing to do that. Yeah, the the whole oh, yeah, recasting price, thing. The price he's selling at. Why would we even go? Why would we even bother? It's not worth. It. Yeah, no, he sells at a great price, and his he's got these famous terms when you buy from him that are awesome. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's no bullshit. Exactly. It's no bullshit. Should we get started building Hammond's cane today? Absolutely. Check your script. Absolutely. Let's do this. Excellent. Yay! All right, so there it is. That's the dowel, and I'm gonna mark. The, uh, the points in where I'm going to start shaving the spacing between the vertebrae. Um, and it's a little bit different at the top because it's got like a, an area that holds the egg kind of it's different yeah, than the rest. Yeah, a little pedestal. Yeah, kind of like a pedestal. So what movie were we watching uh, that day? We just When we're doing a project, we usually throw a movie on and let it loop. I believe that Real Genius played several times during the making of this cane starring... Val Kilmer as Chris Knight and Gabriel Jarrett, I think, is uh, the young Mitch. <laughs> so if you haven't seen that, also it's got uh, some other some other people. I think the guy from Napoleon Dynamite, that's Uncle Rico, is yep. Lazo Hollyfell. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, but I, there was a guy on Facebook the other day that was posting on something, and his his icon was Laszlo. And I said, "I'm both happy and sad for you." <laughs> you try to use that quote whenever you can. Oh uh, well, we I, you got to quote movies. All the time. No shame in that. So anyway, I think I'm putting these two and a half inches apart, to be honest with you. He's not really sure because he doesn't count very well. I don't count well, and, uh, you know, I'm half measuring, half, like, looking at it. Like, how should it be? And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to basically just get the exact center of the top of this so that I can drill a hole. Because the way we're going to do a makeshift lathe, now I see my... The X I drew there is a little bit off, and I'm using that so then I can come back and, and see exactly how off it is and make the lines thicker. And Basically, it's just a method that I have that works for finding the exact, the exact center. Well, I think they can figure that out. That's not too complicated. Hey, not everybody can figure it out. But um, there we go, drilling a hole in the top. So like I said, the way we're going to do this is we're going to turn that tall drill press there into a makeshift lathe, and I'm basically going to use a tap set and put a tap into the top of it and then use that tap to chuck the whole thing into that drill press. Um, so anybody out there, um, I guess we should probably just say do not try this at home. Yeah, because it sucks and I sanded half my finger off. But I, I had a reason for doing that. Mm -hmm. I saw an ad for a shop teacher at the high school. They needed some shop teachers. So, so you needed to cut one of your hands if off. I, if I lost a digit, then I'd have a leg up on all the competition. Yeah, most shop teachers lose their finger after they're at school. My shop teacher, it's it's so cliche, but it actually did happen, did cut a finger off. I wasn't in the classroom when it happened, but it did happen while I was there. Our shop teacher did cut his finger off <laughs> on the table saw. So be careful, kids. Now what we're doing, what I'm doing here is I'm we're creating a base. Because when you we have a lathe, it's not just going to spin around uh, freely. It would just it would it would basically develop har harmonic motion and just fly off like crazy. So uh, this is something that um, we're building for the to hold it at the bottom. And it don't ruin, don't ruin the surprise. <laughs> okay, don't ruin the supply <laughs> okay. surprise. But what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm I've got some Russian vodka. When I went to the store, I said I want vodka, but I only want if it's actually from Russia. Uh -huh. So I can't read the label. And it costs about a hundred bucks, but it's really good. What are you having? Bailey's. Just okay. Mm, it's, creamy. Okay, so just the old standard then. So I, I maybe I'll post a picture of the vodka I'm drinking. I can't pronounce it. I'm not even gonna try. Um, anyway, so basically, just out of two by fours, making a frame for the bottom of this. And you see, there's that car battery, and uh, that that it's car battery. It's fully discharged. It's like five years old. Yeah. Well, we also over the terminals. We we epoxied over the terminals. So. Yeah. 
It's basically just a big weight. It, and that, that's why I kept it. We use it for ballast when, when we need it. Uh, the turn-in value is like 10 bucks if you trade it in. So and, uh, it's got more use around the shop, and we do use it for a bunch of things. So. It worked really well for this project, actually. So there you see our um, always handy to have two drills. Yes. Now you notice that red one, that's like an El, an El Cheapo, but the nice uh, Hitachi one. Yeah, I, I got that for a, a steal. I don't think Hitachi's going to sponsor us because we keep raving about their stuff for free. Yeah, I, I just like the fact that it's green, and that's like one of my favorite colors. So, um, Where'd you get that stop sign, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I, I saw it, and I, I didn't know if I should collaborate and listen or if it was hammer time. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> well, you are about to collaborate here in a minute because um, the ratcheting straps you had were a little wonky, and I tried to do it, and I pretty much had to edit that out because I looked like a complete idiot trying to <laughs> ratchet strap this thing to that. Well, it's with, with any ratchet straps, they're all slightly different, and I've used the same ones for years. So I know how they work, and there you are. Um, so I am actually doing something in the in the video, besides holding the camera very steady. Um, so there, that's what we're doing, and uh, I don't know if we. I drilled a hole in the top of that and dead center, and um, we put us another screw in the bottom of the cane, or what will be the cane, and it'll basically just spin on that. All right like a lathe actually you can see me setting it up there um this was kind of a pain in the butt but once it's in there you know it can spin freely and it won't um get away from us and it's basically a, a much slower spin than a real lathe would have you say I can you know i'm at, it's it's spinning there and you can see it's spinning just in my hand so um that's when we realized that it would work now this is the second time that i've done this um, and now, now it's spinning, and I'm just using the sharpie to, to darken the lines where I want to carve out the vertebrae. And we we closed the garage and did this outside. Uh, the dust contamination gets really bad, and uh, with all the projects that we do with the painting and stuff like that, um, the dust just sits in the air. And then if we put something that's painted in there, it gets coated with with the dust. So we've been trying to get rid of that. Well, not only that, but we're paint. This is a one day build, so I'm going to be painting this just in hours from this moment. Yeah. So I don't want the dust in there. Now I'm just using a a file to to get the grooves in, and um, that's just a regular D file, right? You're right. I think the flat bastard does make an appearance. And for those of you out there, yes, flat files are actually called flat bastards. <laughs> I think it's awesome, and you should tell everyone you They're know. They're not just bastards with uh, ripped abs? No, that's a different kind of flat bastard. You should tell everybody you know whenever you pull one out that it's a flat bastard, because not everybody knows, and it's funny. Um, so basically, now with a real lathe that would be spinning so fast, it would be super dangerous to handhold the tools and just put your hand on this. This is actually, you can't tell because of the frame rate uh, that the camera's ro rolling at, but it's not spinning that fast. It looks much faster in the video. Yeah, it's it's set on a slow speed on the drill press but it was still fast enough for when I slipped a little bit to uh, sand into my finger well, quite painfully. Well the sandpaper is what did that to you not yeah. the not the cane. Um, now um, I'm still gonna say don't try this at home. Yeah it's I mean we're, we're making do we and we really kind of wanted to make a rudimentary lathe now, see, this is GoPro footage here that I have on the, the plate of the drill press, and the frame rate of that is different, and it's caused, like, a really weird... Not only that, but the, the, the um, GoPro is attached to the drill press, so the, the vibration of it... That looked kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it created a weird effect, but it made it look like it was spinning really slow, which is really strange, and it also made it look wonky, which it, it's not. You see there, that's, you know, it's... Um, we, we did... Now, oh, this is where we... <laughs> it started to get really hot on the bottom... Um, started to make fire and what actually had happened I didn't notice right away is that it wasn't chucked in real tight so it was it was slipping and making contact with that wood and uh, I see you're using your you're putting your force awakens cup to good use there Scott <laughs> to keep that cool now remember that battery we did cover the terminals with epoxies like and it's ago. yeah and yeah, it's, it's it's been dead for years and now I'm just using like really coarse sandpaper to shape it and we did bring the fire extinguisher out after we started making fire. Yeah, there the fire. is a fire extinguisher there if anyone is worried. So 
So what I'm using is I have sandpaper in in one hand, in both hands, and on one end I'm trying to taper the cane in at the bottom, and on the other one I'm starting to shape the vertebrae. Um, it's amazing. It almost looks like it's not spinning, but it is. Um, so as it spins, I'm just yeah, there you can see it. Now it's starting to get a little bit, um, it's starting to vibrate a little bit down there. But if you use the sandpaper, you see it'll it'll stay. Um, it is kind of a scary way of doing this. Like I said we're we're idiots. Um, we take full responsibility for being idiots, son. Yeah, it's, I mean, and the thing is, we're looking at getting a lathe. Um, we're doing this build for a friend. We want to make a video, so, um, since we don't have a lathe. And there it is. It's the, the cane, the basic yes. shape is done. Now we're going to start making the amber egg, which is probably, if anyone's going to do this, this is the part that's going to be the toughest for you. We made this mold out of silicone, which is a mold of a ceramic egg that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And we just made a two-part silicone mold. And I've, like I said, I've, I've sold a, a, a number of these eggs on the RPF. And, and uh, so that the mold is getting a little bit old now. But it's still good. And you have to polish the part when it comes out anyway. So flashing and stuff like that's not an issue. Um, that's just clear polyester casting resin. And I'm mixing a tint in. It's a yellow um um, I can't remember the exact name of it. It's not just called yellow. It's got a name. It might even be called amber, for all I know. Um, you mixed enough for both bo sides at once and only catalyzed one at a time. That way the, so the, the, they're you, the same color. Exactly. So I, I mixed it all together and then separated it into the two halves. And then I catalyzed it with the MEKP. I under-catalyzed it so it wouldn't get real hot. And the way I do this is I'll pour one half first. Now, Scott, you were the cameraman for this, and you're very shaky. Um, I cleaned this up with some image stabilization, but uh, well, you... I, I figured I only wanted to hold the camera once, and if I did such a bad job, that yeah, you're never doing it again. Yeah, exactly. So my my plan worked. Um, but we, you know, we don't. We're not full time YouTubers. We do this for fun. Yeah, this is this is just. We like making stuff. I would be now if we if the channel grows, the more we'll do. You know, if it if it becomes something, I can do a lot more. I'd love to do it. I love making these videos. Um, anyway, you see, I, I I put in about half, and I'm right now I'm just pulling all the bubbles down into the pore spout area. And uh, so I, it's it's sat for about three or four minutes. The bubbles come to the top, and they're really easy just to, to pull out of the way. Yeah, we we don't have a vacuum chamber, uh, and we're. Uh, we don't have a uh, um, pressure pot either, so we we make do. And the thing is, you can do a lot with very basic tools. You watch a lot of YouTube videos, read a lot on the RPF and similar sites, and information is out there. I and shouldn't uh, mention these. Um, these are crane flies. They're not mosquitoes. Crane flies are what they used in the screen used canes. They look just like mosquitoes. You might know them under the name uh, mosquito hawks. Some people call them skeeter eaters. But what they are, they're, um, they're, they're crane flies. And they just look like big mosquitoes. Um, and yeah, that's it's pretty awesome looking bug. Um, so there we go. And uh, now what I've waited for it to start turning uh, to a gel so that there's enough surface tension so it sits in the middle and you can position yeah, it. Yeah, now this is where I start to, you know, I have to kind of move quick. Now I can pose the bug here for a minute, but that's starting to kick off. So what I really need to do is close up the mold and pour the other half in. Um, so there it is, a two-part mold, and I just t put tape around it and catalyze the, the other half of the, the resin, which will match perfectly because I put the tint in when it was all together. Um, and here we go. Now, we got to be careful to do this so that bug doesn't slide out of the way, but it is stuck into the other half that's already... Yeah, because it's, it's very tacky when it gels up like that. Right, so the bug will stay in the middle. Now, I've had them where they came loose before. Um, and there it is. And now, time. Now this is later. Now I'm opening it. We went to lunch and came back. There it is. Is that the day you made me go to Popeyes instead of KFC? Hey, that's it. I like KFC better. So it came out of the mold, and now, it, like I said, it comes out of mold with flashing, and it's imperfect, or imperfect. But what I do is I chuck this into the drill press also. And, and it fell out like a, a dozen times. 
Well, yeah, but I'm just holding it with sandpaper. So as it spins, I'm just sanding it so it gets a nice perfectly round. And you don't see all of it, but I went from like um, 60 grit to like 150 to 320. And like right there, I think is like 600. Now, anyway, I went all the way up to like 3,000 grit sandpaper. And now we're wet, you know, wet sanding it. I didn't show all of that. Yeah, cause, I mean, it's it's repetitive. You just went up through the yeah. steps of the sandpaper. Exactly. And then to a polish. This didn't take very long. This was like, like 15 minutes. No, like 10. Like when I was making these for guys on the RPF, this part was fast, like 5, 10 minutes to polish this. Now we're up to polishing compounds. And you'll see, like the second after I touch it with this compound, it's going to be crystal clear in just a second. Yeah, that, that was like aluminum polish, yeah. wasn't it? No, that's uh, for car finish. That's knockdown for... Okay. Which isn't the polishing compound that I'm used to using, but any polishing... Because we couldn't find it in the garage. It was lost in there. But this stuff worked better, actually. This is um, this is for, like, buffing out a uh, clear coat. Um, but, you know, it's like any polishing compound. It has a mild abras abrasive in it. And um, you see it's, it's perfectly clear, and it's spinning fast, so you can't see it. But, but wait when you see it. When it stops, it's... Well, it, the polish was higher on this than the ones you did in the past. Yeah. And it was so reflective that the... The bug reflected in the bottom oh, of the yeah. thing when you held it up to it light a certain way. There light. it is. And now I'm using a Forstner bit, which we can. Uh, any any of you guys, if you're if you're reading your guidebooks properly and you're watching tested videos and other things, you, you should already know about Forstner bits. Adam Savage talked about. Oh, they're about. they're awesome. Um, but it, it's perfect for opening up the top of this cane, uh, which gives us a spot for the uh, egg to go. Now I'm doing the paintwork. You see, it's already dark outside now. Um, Scott, your friend's busted ass vehicle is over there. And uh, <laughs> does that thing run? I can't even remember. Uh, I've, I got to replace the starter on it. For I was me. making sure to get extra overspray on it. Um, oh, I, it'll match. Now we usually use automotive paints, but yeah. um, for this, this is a this is the this is the same paint that I used on my R2. Actually, for the skins, this is a um, satin white. And what I like about it is it's very porous, which this is supposed to be bone, so it's it's great. I. Well, and also with this paint, it does slightly yellow over the, over, while it gets older. Correct. Which is, for the cane, is a great feature because... And for look, R2, it's a great feature. It'll look more authentic as time goes on. Right. So now I'm airbrushing in uh, the, the... Basically, this is... I came up with my... I don't know how other people paint this. This is my method for painting it. I'm just using, like, a deck tan, which... Um, for anybody out there building the Millennium Falcon should recognize the deck hand. <laughs> so, yeah, Star Wars finds its way in everything. Um, but There's my uh, Millennium Falcon model kit up there we got to work on. Oh, up in the on top of that shelf. Yeah. Um, either way, um, I'm darkening it, darkening it in the in the middle of the vertebrae to give it that look. And um, it's very simple airbrushing. You know, I'm not having to use a stencil. I'm just shading it in. Hey, you're, you're doing it all by eye. And... Um, you, you spend a, a fair amount of time. I had to cut you off at one point because you said you'd just keep going and going and going and going until someone said stop. Well, yeah, I'll keep on weathering it and keep on going. And, and my Hammond cane, the one that, that we showed at the beginning of the video, after I took it home, like I, I, I would come home at night and just pick it up and grab like weathering stuff and pastels and just, and, and lacquers and just futz with it forever and I fussed with it for a few weeks and now that's why it's you you commented that that one looked like it was more finished than this one at the end and that's why so Nick if you're watching this this cane you can continue to weather on it we did this all in one day so you know there's a limit on how many washes we can do and let them dry thoroughly and you know you, you really should after you do a wash do a coat of lacquer to seal it because when you do the next wash a wash is mostly thinner yeah you're gonna be taking off older layers on, and every wash we did on this, you did spray uh, a clear coat on I it. I did spray clear coat on it, and at the end, I sprayed a clear coat on it. Um, and that that rattle can clear coat, oh my God, does it smell bad. Um, that's a la It's because it's lacquer. It's yeah. actually not a clear coat. Um, it's it's, it's a it's, clear lacquer. Yeah, and it's a matte finish lacquer, which you want for this cane. Now, I'm just brushing in the details here. Um, right now, I'm, I'm kind of using a heavy hand on these, but... The thing is, I'm going to come back with an abrasive pad and, and score this. And I'm also going to use a thumbtack later to add uh, striations in the bone to give it, like, you know, an aged crack look. So it's not going to, these lines aren't going to be that dark in the end. And on mine, they're much lighter from all the coats of weathering that went over top of them. 
And uh, actually, Encino Man's playing in the back right now. I think we yeah, switched. Yeah, we, we, I think we watched I see, uh, Polly Real Shore Genius and, uh, a bunch of times. Polly Shore and Brendan Fraser and uh, Sean Astin. Is that, is yeah. He, yeah, Sean Astin. Rudy Hobbit. Rudy Hobbit. It's funny. Um, I, we were watching Encino Man the other day, and his uh, Sean Astin's character, his mom in the video, was talking about some charity thing on the phone, and it didn't make any sense, and then I started commenting. I was like, wait a minute. I know way too much about Encino Man. <laughs> I should not know what his mom does on a daily basis. Um, either way, so now I've got the abrasive pad, and I'm just basically just scratching the paint off now the airbrush paint also is getting you can't see it on camera but it's getting all these little scratches in it you can probably see a few there now what i've got here is just a thumbtack and i'm just adding scratches in over the bone yeah, i've got the some uh, dentist picks but we couldn't find them so we just grabbed a, a thumbtack just grab whatever um throw you know it's a weathered prop you could pretty much the egg's not on it yet so you don't have to worry about damaging that you could just throw the thing down the driveway a couple times um I think people have done that with like prop guns and stuff. Just after they paint them, just slide them down the well, cement. Uh, real guns too. On uh, this uh, one forum I was on, some um, real smart guy um, took his brand new rifle and he'd throw it down the driveway a Wait, little bit. People to, are weathering their real guns. Uh, yeah, because he wanted to look like you know he was in the war he zone. He wanted or to something. look like he was a real badass. <laughs> yeah. So. He, he, he took a $2,000 rifle and threw it down the driveway so it would have realistic weathering on it. Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> um, so anyway, here's a wash now. So th basically, this is just acrylic paint with uh, a few drops of paint and a whole bunch of uh, uh, thinner. Basically, just real thinned out, watered way down. And uh, and now I've watered down some, uh, some of the brown paints and I'm lightening the, uh, the spaces between the vertebrae. Now, um, if you're looking at the canes, the screen-used canes, those separations are much lighter. But like I said, um, this is a prop where you want to, you know, you want to fuss with it a lot. Um, it looks like I'm preparing now to put yeah, the amber. Yeah, right it's on. just some uh, five-minute epoxy from Walmart. And putting it down in there. Now, this actually adds to the strength of the egg too. I wanted to get it to where the the epoxy just just comes up to where when I put that stem in, it fills up the entire thing. And then just wipe some of the excess strips away, and but that's a really good um, that's in there now pretty much forever. And that epoxy is just gonna um, yeah, as long as you don't run it through the dishwasher, it'll work great. Um, these cane bottoms or chair bottom chair leg bottoms or whatever these little rubber end caps you can just get at Lowe's, a couple bucks. There it is. It's a one day build of a ham and cane, and I think it's gonna go back to um, it's gonna go back to us in real time in a second for the wrap up. Here it is, a one day Jurassic Park cane build, Hammond Cane. Hammond Cane. Hammond Cane. Yeah. And this is the one I already made. That one sucks. <laughs> this is my second one, that's my third one. I mixed the resin a little bit lighter this time. The amber, mine's a much more yellowy, honeyish color. That one's yellower. They're all different. That's the thing. Every one of these I've made is slightly oh, it's, different. It's a handmade piece. It is unique to itself. The really neat thing about this one that I discovered accidentally, the polish is so good that when you have the light in it just right, you can see the reflection of the, the crane flying. That polishing compound that I used this time wasn't the same as the one I used on this. Yeah, because we couldn't find it. Which was a happy accident. So that's like a cutting that cuts down on orange peel, but it worked. <laughs> so, you know, that's how we do it. Well, I mean, th there were a whole bunch of things that we tried today that didn't work out right the first time. Um, things that we thought worked, you know, caught on fire instead of working the way that we had planned. Were you filming when the fire happened? Yeah. Okay. A couple times. Okay. Um, well, it didn't technically wasn't well, a fire. We, we got a lot of smoke and burnt stuff. Yep. So, but, and, uh, I mean, like any of our builds, there's a lot of um, figuring out things as we go along. You can build stuff. You just have to get some tools. You know, we don't have a lathe. This would have taken a lot less time if we had a lathe. Well, we had a rudimentary lathe. Yes, we, we were able to fabricate a rudimentary lathe. 
It's true. Couldn't find any soft spots, though. It's a rock. It doesn't have any motivation. Um, so all in all, it was uh, it was a fun build. It's nice to do a one-day build where you have nothing when you start and something when you're done. You have that now. And uh, well, Nick will have it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll... Nick, I hope you really enjoy it. We had fun making it. I was actually doing more work than what the camera shows because I was holding the camera the whole time. And it got like really heavy. It weighs at least half a pound. <laughs> so um, Hammond canes, they're cool. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. By the way, this yellow paint, I mean this white paint, I meant to say, um, is the same white paint that I use on my R2 and on this one, and it yellows over time, which is great. So the white paint, this, yeah, this is a little bit yellower. You probably tell on the camera. Also. I put the vertebrae a little bit smaller on that one. They're two and a half inches instead of three inches apart, which I think is closer to the real cane. Mm -hmm. So that one's a little bit more screen accurate. Now, the real canes at Hammond Cane uh, used in the movie tapered way, way down at the bottom. Um, but they actually gave canes away to a lot of the higher ranking executives that worked on the movie or um, not the director. Because I'm sure he's got one too. Producers so and Spielberg's out. Either way, they gave some away. And they didn't taper, from what I understand, because they wanted to be more robust. Mm -hmm. And I think when Rilo did his run of canes, he split the difference. So they still tapered some, mm -hmm. but not down to a really small point where it'd be really fragile. So that's kind of what we did. I did a little bit of a taper. Yeah, it's definitely got a taper. Um, the, the stopper can be taken off. It can be left on. You know, it is painted all the way down mm -hmm. there. And, yeah, so Nick can cut this anywhere. If he wants to make it shorter, if, like, a person wants to actually use it. Mm -hmm. These are wooden. These aren't resin copies. Right. Um, so if you wanted to cut that off, just put it in the chop saw and cut it, and you're good. Um, but, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of uh, weathering in the scratches. Um, the, the weathering actually came out really nice. Uh, several coats of clear in between the coats of weathering, uh, but the, uh, the the black washes really uh, make everything pop out. You see, I did more of a black wash on that one than this one even. Mm -hmm. This one I did more brown wash, kind of. That one's a darker... But here's the thing with that is like Nick can like go with washes over it himself. He can refine it if he wants to. This one, because it's mine, like uh, I, while I was making this one after I was done, I would come home and I would... I would grab like some washes and I would put it on this for like a few weeks. I would come home and I'd put a wash on it. And well, I had it. to stop you tonight. I it's, would have kept going on that one right. for a long Yeah. And it would have been a two day build and then a three day build and then a two week build. And, you know, then Nick would have been sad. Well, Nick can sit down with some washes like I did. This one I sat down and I did washes on this and I put scratches in it for like a few weeks. I would come mm -hmm. home and play with it. But it wasn't like I was like working. Like I would come home and mindlessly put washes on it and watch TV. And Nick, if you want to do that with that one, get in contact with me once you have it. You have my number, and you can find out exactly how to do that. And, you know, really looking at it, there's a lot of black in the cracks. And I don't think it really needs much more in the way of washes. You know how I am. I want something to do. Yeah. And, uh, but we had a lot of fun making it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching the video. Um, so, I think we had a most bodacious day. Can I play you out? Sure. I'm Darth Ted. And I'm Luke Bill. You're not my father. Join me. I'll never join you. Sure.